Hello and welcome to Portsmouth This Week. I'm your host, Conley Zani. This show is under the auspices of Rich Rayner, our Portsmouth Town Administrator. Together, Rich, myself, and the entire Portsmouth This Week team are on a mission to build community. We do that by bringing you accurate and timely information about the events and information that impacts you. We introduce you to the faces, the personalities, the leaders in this magical place in which we live. I'm very honored today to have Rich himself here. Welcome back to the show, Rich. Okay. It's nice to be here. Thank I, you. I, we have so much to talk about. Yep. I, I mean, I, I feel like we should do several back-to-back -back <laughs> shows here. So we'll see if we can kind of hit the highlights of, of several topics. You know, you can't go around this town without seeing signs for and against <laughs> all sorts of issues, right? Yep. So what should we start with? South Coast wind, what do you think? <laughs> sure. <let's, laughs> You're like, hit me, hit me with the big one. Let's get into it. <laughs> all right, all right. So sure. tell, us, tell us something accurate about the situation, all right? Because like, there's so much misinformation out there. So sure. what, what's going on with our role, the council, the contracts? Sure. I mean, in a nutshell, uh, the federal government has leased land offshore uh, to so that developers could put in wind turbines to create green energy that would tie into the electrical grid. That's and it. That's a, a federal nutshell. initiative, this and is a, that is happening. Yeah, it's a pillar of uh, the nation's energy strategy to uh, become more energy self-sufficient and create more green energy, so that we can divest ourselves of our uh, need for. Uh, carbon-based energy. That's the bottom line. Right. Um, so it's 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 a it's a federal initiative. It's a national government initiative. It trickles down to the states. The governors of, of New England have all signed on to this. Um, so it's it's coming. Right. Um, how it affects Portsmouth? Uh, there is a developer, South Coast uh, Wind, formerly Mayflower, uh, that has uh, leased uh, some of these fields. Uh, they're going to erect turbines. They're going to have to tie into the grid. Their plan is to tie in at Braden Point. Um, the uh, the most feasible economic uh, and shortest route, I guess, uh, for them is to come up uh, the Saconet, cut across Portsmouth, go back into the, uh, the bay, and tie into Braden Point. Um, that is not a Portsmouth decision. That is a proposal that will go before the Energy Facility Siting Board. Uh, that's energy, a state. That's a state agency okay. uh, that will require uh, opinion and advi advisory opinions from a number of agencies to include Portsmouth. But each of those agencies will be asked uh, for advisory opinions, adv opinions in very specific areas. Uh, so Portsmouth will be not be asked, do you support wind energy? Uh, we will not be asked to render an opinion on uh, environmental effects, uh, effects on wildlife, effects on uh, tourism. It, that, that's not what Portsmouth is going to be asked to do. Uh, so this is a proposal that was brought to Portsmouth. Um, they have been discussing, this has been discussed and open with the count, town council. The town council did give uh, me and staff uh, our marching orders uh, to uh, negotiate with South Coast Wind a what's known as a host community agreement that would be most beneficial to uh, Portsmouth and look out for our interests. Uh, that's we did the best we could, and that's that's where it stood. Uh, this contract, proposed contract, host community agreement, was presented to the council at the last council meeting, and uh, obviously they uh, voted to sign it. Um, totally well aware of all the issues, pro and con, emotional or not emotional on both sides. That wasn't our task. Our task was to do, if, if, if this is going to go through, uh, what can we do for Portsmouth to protect our interests? Right. It's 2,400 feet of cable on town property. The rest is either on private property or town property. As I said, the decision is ultimately going to be made by the EFSB. There, there are many, many boards, many other pieces of the puzzle that are going to have to fall in place before this project goes forward. Um, this is just one small piece of the pie. Um, you know, it was presented and we're going to do it. Uh, I'll hit the nail on the head right here. Obviously, there were two big issues that came up uh, that people, uh, that I am aware of, that people have talked about. Uh, the first is uh, the value of the host community agreement. And there has been a lot of chatter about, well, the value is not really $23 million. 
Um, I can only respond to that. Yes, I, you know, I, ha I have uh, two master's degrees and I have also two degrees in business. I understand uh, the future value of money. I understand the net present net value. Net present value, yes, I, right, I get right. It. Yeah. I, I get it. And, and yes, those are valid discussions to be had. However, if I give you 10 rocks, 100 years from now, you're still going to have 10 rocks. The value of those rocks may be different. The, the contract is a $23 million contract. It, we're going, if this goes through, we're going to get $23 million. The future value of that money, the net present value of that money, compared to our assumptions uh, of inflation over time, right. will change. It will be different, yes. What we had to do was negotiate in uh, relative to what was in the realm of the possible and compared to other host community agreements that have been negotiated. And quite frankly, uh, foot for foot, this is the most valuable uh, lucrative HCA uh, that has been negotiated thus far. Uh, right. It's about $10,000 a foot. And again, that was your task. That was our task. Not to say yes or no to South Coast Wind. Uh, correct. That's uh, not Portsmouth's And it's difficult decision. because I hear what people have to say, both yeah. for and against. Yeah. Um, but that's not my task. My task was to do, if we're going to do this, what does Ports, what is in it for Portsmouth? And uh, we did the best we could. The other thing, uh, that I'll just tackle, uh, th there's a, an argument that, uh, well, we altered the contract prior to the council uh, agreeing this, to this. Uh, that's not really true. There were edits made. We posted it right after we got it. Uh, we got it at Christmas. We had to wait for people to get in the office. As soon as people got in the office, it was posted uh, so that people could look at it, the council could look at it. Um, we did get feedback from uh, some people, particularly two councilors who saw typos and asked if language could be made more consistent uh, and uh, could we uh, clarify some of the c uh, language that was in the contract that, that would solidify our position with respect to the proposed routes. We talked to South Coast and we did it. Um, and so the essence didn't change? Nothing changed with regard to the structure or uh, the value of the contract. What we did is we clarified uh, who had the legal authority, Rhode Island courts. Uh, we clarified that we would have to negotiate in good faith with both, both parties would have to negotiate if the ultimate route is other than the two proposed routes that are in the contract. And uh, we made a whereas statement where uh, mo almost all of the contracts stated that the council would not oppose uh, the, uh, the, the project. Um, there was a whereas that stated that the council would support. Um, it's a nuanced difference, but it's something that we had to discuss, and we changed that to match the rest of the document where it said the council would not oppose. Um, that, that's all that happened, you know, so right. well, that's it. So the, the, the HCA is signed. Um, the, the town gets $500,000 uh, on signing. We've already received uh, 100000 None of this has to be turned back if the project doesn't move forward. There's still a long way to go before this goes forward. Right. Uh, but the count, town got $600,000 uh, for negotiating in good faith and signing the document, and uh, that will be up to the council on how they want to expend those funds. All right. Well, congratulations on that. And thanks for clarifying some of those sure. things. There's, again, so much misinformation out there. So... <laughs> Love to hear it right straight from you. So Thanks. let's tackle another tricky one. How about roundabout? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna keep them coming. Yeah. What, um, what do you wanna say about that? Yeah, I mean, it, th this is something that this, this, the concept and the idea of roundabouts uh, really predates my tenure. Uh, this was something that's been discussed since uh, the early 2000, 2003, four or five. Um, and it rolled up into the town center project. It's a very emotional topic. Uh, however, uh, in December of 2021, uh, we were uh, issued a request from DOT uh, to get council support for wrapping up projects in the State Transportation Improvement Program. There were a, bun there were a bunch of projects all tied in with East Main Road, to, and they wanted to bundle those projects in one project, Middletown and Portsmouth, to include a roundabout. Okay. And that was uh, put up for vote back in January 2022. The council approved it. Uh, the plans uh, finally reached 100% level. Um, on the 100% stage, uh, they were ready to bid the contract. And uh, Director Elvedi asked 
uh, me to go before, well, to have the count, well, he asked me to do it. I told, to affirm support for the project. I said, I don't have that authority. That has to go to the council. It went to the council. Uh, the meeting had to get postponed. There was a special meeting where, in principle, they agreed to it. So that's agreement number two. Uh, but they had questions. DOT said that uh, all the questions are available. We're not going to we're not going to answer the questions because we've already answered them either in documents or meetings that have already been held. The staff answered those questions for the council. We submitted those to the council, um, and then there was uh, another meeting. Um, where uh, after a long deliberation, the council decided to affirm their support for the project to include the roundabout. Um, where are we in the timeline? That is now <laughs> <Sorry>. just, <laughs> that was just before Christmas. I received a letter on January 10th uh, from DOT saying that you know, after everything that they had put us through and all the special meetings and the emotions that were displayed, uh, they decided to walk away. They just wrote a letter saying that uh, we're not moving forward with the project and we don't know when it will be included in the, into the TIP again. And in particular, <coughs> the project being the whole project, the whole not project. just the roundabout. And I had had numerous discussions with right. DOT. Listen, I, I'm not taking a position for or against on a roundabout, but why are we going to throw away the baby with the bathwater and not pave East Main Road? We can, can we at least pave East Main Road and defer the discussion on the roundabout or that intersection uh, and come to a consensus on that later? Uh, the answer was no. It would have to be entirely redesigned and rescoped, and we either do it or we don't. Boom. Um, so the council okay. voted. Uh, we got the letter. Uh, I tried for a week to get DOT to respond to me. Uh, I had very specific questions about what happened, what were the decisions, why were they made. No answer. Uh, I decided to go to the governor, uh, and I went to the governor for one very specific reason. Um, the director of transportation does not have the authority to make major revisions to the state transportation improvement program. That has to come and be vetted through the state uh, planning council and then vetted through the governor's office. I wasn't, I wasn't trying to play mom against dad or anything like that. I was just trying to get the governor to help us in a non-confrontational way, uh, help facilitate uh, a, a meeting and an agreement with DOT where we could talk about the project and not just throw it away. Right. Uh, I did like that. Like not so binary. Just there's not so binary. Be, yeah, and yeah. I that was on the, the I wrote that letter on uh, I think the 16th uh, or the 17th. I don't remember. Um, the following day, LVD was on the his, the morning radio show, uh, Thursday morning radio show. I did not listen to it, but I heard from numerous people. Uh, that he was on the radio and he said it was Portsmouth's fault and uh, he stopped the project, uh, paused the project because Portsmouth had flip-flopped numerous times. Um, I, that didn't sit well with me because we had not flip-flopped. The council had voted three times to affirm this project and support this project. Um, so that's when I made the decision not to wait for a response from the governor's office on my letter. I decided that I needed to talk to the governor directly. I ended up talking to uh, his liaison. Um, and the chief of staff uh, discussed the situation uh, with uh, Director Alvidi, and Director Alvidi called me later that day to affirm that DOT is behind the project. They're going to do the project. It's going to happen in reverse order. Portsmouth will go behind uh, the Middletown portion of the project. Okay. And right now, the roundabout is in the project. However, this will give time for, uh, there's uh, uh, litigation against the town and DOT. Uh, everybody knows from Clements Market, uh, regarding the project, uh, this will give us time to settle that case and then uh, re-engage with stakeholders uh, and abutters uh, to come to a resolution and consensus on what needs to be done with that intersection. I don't care what happens with the intersection. I care that whatever is done is done right and that we right. don't abandon the rest of East Main Road Over uh, the roundabout. because we're, people are upset about the roundabout. Right. Work needs to get done and it should be done in Portsmouth. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm hoping that they'll be able to ultimately separate that if they need to. But it sounds like that's so. the plan. They're going to start in Middletown on Route 138 and then come on up to Portsmouth. Correct. While we settle some some legal things. Correct. Okay. Yeah. All right. Again. But I think the important part of that, it's not just the legal thing. Um, it, the important part of that is that there's a commitment from DOT that we will re-engage with, uh, as he said, aggrieved parties, obviously the abutters. Uh, and hopefully we can come to a consensus on what's right to do there. 
you know, but we shouldn't just walk away from it and then make threats that uh, it may never get back into the tip again. That's not the right thing to do. Absolutely not, and that's great. And thank you. It sounds like your your conversations, like, thank you for that. Sure. Um, that's that's the hard work, right? Right there, just being <laughs> like, yikes, right? <laughs> All right, that's fantastic. All right, so let's talk <laughs> another biggie. Oh boy, <laughs> transfer station. Oh my goodness. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, sure, uh, you know, another very passionate topic in, in Portsmouth. Um, there, there was never a discussion to close the transfer, transfer station. There was uh, years ago, about eight, seven, eight years ago, there was, uh, we were asked to put out a request for proposals on going to curbside and then allowing, if they so choose, vendors to use the transfer station as part of their operation, but it would cease to becoming a transfer station the way the citizens use it. Yeah. Um, yeah, but that was that was done and settled, and it was decided not to move forward with that RFP. Uh, the latest uh, round, uh, there was an idea that we would move forward with a hybrid solution where uh, you would get curbside, uh, but then uh, diversion items would be handled at the transfer station. It would be open like twice a week. Um, obviously, there are people. There, there's about 2,200 households out of almost 7,000 in Portsmouth that utilize the transfer station, and they're very passionate, uh, as the council heard. Um, so I think ultimately, you know, uh, uh, this is the way things work, and it, this is the way things should work. I think it came to a good resolution, um, and we'll see how it plays out in the future, but we're going to issue two RFPs. We'll have two enterprise funds. Um, we'll have the transfer station enterprise funds where you pay to use the transfer station if that's what you want to use and you use it just the same way you're using it today. That contract ends June 2025 and usually we send those requests for proposals out about six months in advance. So around Christmas of this year we'll send out an RFP for the continued operation of that transfer station the way it's currently used. And if people want to use it, that's great. We'll be releasing on Monday a, a request for proposals for curbside pickup. Now, I know that there's a lot of pain. We shouldn't do this, but, but I have to th sit there and think to myself, if there's 2,200 households out of almost 7,000 that are using a transfer station, what are the almost you yeah. know, 5,000 households doing right. without the transfer station? Well, they're contracting. And uh, I know that those prices have gone up considerably. If there's something that the town can do for them, reduce the number of trucks on the road, provide good service and, and a cheaper price, uh, that Sign gives them the kind of service <laughs> that you. they're used to having <laughs> yeah. and that they want, and that maybe that's something we can do because that's what they're asking us to do, and that's what the yeah. council's asked us to do. So, yeah. um, it'll be two. Think of it as two clubs. You'll have uh, the curbside club, and you'll have the enterprise or the uh, transfer station club, and you can join both or you can join either uh, uh, one. It doesn't matter. But yeah. you'll have a cafeteria menu of two, and you'll decide uh, as a resident wh how you want your trash handled uh, moving forward. If the bids come back on the curbside that are competitive and something that the council wants to move forward with. Right, right, absolutely. So I think everybody got what they wanted. Uh, I think, I hope. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's no Machiavellian thought that we're going to take services away from people. It's, it's all about trying. There's limited dollars, whether it's an enterprise fund or a government fund. Uh, it's still money that people have to spend out of their pocket, and how can we help? Yeah. Now, I heard some interesting comparisons of us versus some other towns. Can you kind of clarify some of those, or did you follow up on any I, of that? I did. I did. Uh, there was a very specific comment about uh, a town in Connecticut that uh, operated it at, at a much reduced cost. Right. How'd they do that? Um, well, it, obviously, it piqued my interest. I mean, I wanted to make sure yeah. if this is, in fact, true, uh, how could we offer a transfer station at $40 per resident and if we could do the same thing that this town or city was doing, then we ought to look at it uh, yeah. because that's the first time I'd ever heard something like that. Well, it turns out that's not quite the whole story. Um, their their uh, transfer station is um, available to all residents. So it's much like Sandy Point. If you're a resident, you can get a sticker to the transfer station. The reason they can do that is because the transfer station is in the tax base. So whether you use the transfer station or not, Oh, you're, you're paying, paying for, for it. it already. Both in your that taxes. Is, that's in your tax. And that's not the case with us. That's not, well, it used to be, but it's not the case okay. with us. Okay. Uh, and then the price that was mentioned is not so much the price for the use of the transfer station, the price is for uh, 
disposition of bulky waste and diversion items, if you go over a certain amount, uh, there is at, at this time a $60 fee minimum, and then it goes up from there. So that's okay, their transportation. Okay, so those numbers just weren't quite. They they quite weren't on. quite a, a accurate. It, it, um, and then there was a discussion about well, um, you know, limiting the garbage truck size by law, and the garbage had to be picked up at your home. Uh, the town has nothing to do with that. Uh, that was mentioned. Um, that is between you and your vendor. Um, but there is no the only regist the only requirement as is that waste haulers in that town uh, have to be registered with the town. Um, that's the only requirement, but they can use full-size pickup, uh, they can use full-size trucks, they could use, uh, n you know, bins at the curb. Uh, that's between you and your vendor, and okay. the town does not get involved in that at all. So right. structurally, it's nearly, other than the fact that their transfer station is in the tax base, ours is an enterprise fund, um, there's really no difference. Uh, they have to pay extra for their bulky right. waste if they go over a certain limit. Uh, we uh, have kind of almost the same, where you have so many runs, bulky waste runs. So it, it, it's a very, very similar program, except right, right, right. You know, I, they don't have I pay as you, you throw; we have pay as you throw bags. Well, that that makes more sense, and yeah. thank you for clarifying that. So, yeah. speaking of tax base, let's talk budget. All right, and sure. we just we we've kind of just got five minutes left. I've I've thrown so many biggies at you. Yeah. So let's talk budget, where we are in that process, and um, yeah. Sure. Um, we're, we actually, literally today, right before I came here, um, finance had their last meeting with the last department. So all, all the department budgets have been received. Uh, now there's some follow-ups and there's some clarifications that all happen over the next uh, week or two. Um, I will start, uh, I've literally I've got it on a USB stick in my pocket right now. <laughs> um, I will be going through that this weekend I will be sitting down next week with the finance director uh, to smooth out the budget as it is requested. As happens every year at this time, it's going to be, um, it will far exceed what the council either has a stomach for or what the law allows with respect to uh, the levy. The levy can only go up maximum 4% year over year at any right. time. Right. Um, we try not to approach that. There's uh, people obviously don't like that, um, and nor do I. The, once we have that ironed out, I will bring in each of the departments and uh, we'll let them know what we think the priorities are. It'll be a give and take, and we will come to a consensus within the staff on this is what we asked for. The same thing is kind of happening in parallel on the school side. Uh, they'll have two budget presentations in February, and then they'll do their third budget presentation to the school committee um, in March. We'll get the school budget. It's a little bit easier, just the way the calendar lays out this year than other years, because I'll get the school budget about two weeks before I'm required to turn the town budget over to the council. Normally, I only get a couple days, which is, uh, uh, you know, three sleepless That's nights a, trying to get right, this ironed absolutely. out. Absolutely. Um, and so we'll have two weeks. So it'll be a much more measured process this year. Uh, I don't expect any big changes. I did lay out some uh, initiatives to the council the other night. Um, the fact of the matter is I, we, have, uh, we have difficulty uh, hiring and retaining people right now. Uh, we, we do need to take a look at compensation. Uh, we do need to take a look at organization. Um, our planning department uh, is tasked with doing a lot, uh, and it's not organized very well, so we have some ideas there. Uh, the fire department, we have a very uh, uh, expert and professional fire department, uh, literally and figuratively. Um, however, uh, I think that needs to be laid out a little bit better. Um, and then, uh, in capital, there are some things that we want to address. I mean, I know that uh, you know we've been looking at the triple S fields forever. Uh, we'll do our best to see what we can do to get that project kick-started again. That's been languishing for quite a while. We want to finish the walls in Linden Lane. Um, there is uh, some improvements at Glen Manor House that we think uh, we might be eligible for with respect to grant money. I'll need to see how much grant match will be required, but I think we'll be able to replace the boilers there. Uh, we want to continue the uh, public safety uh, capital fund 
which helps pay for uh, the uh, fire vehicles and p two police cars every year, right. tasers, that kind of stuff. Um, so there's a lot of good stuff coming, uh, but this is always the tough part of the year because you know I have to be the Grinch and sit down with the departments right. and say these are all great ideas. We uh, can't do them all. You got to pick three out of ten here. <laughs> you know? Right. Um, right. It, it's it's tough, but that's what has to happen. You know, but I think we're I think we're on good footing. I don't expect any big surprises in the budget. Uh, I think school the school is going to work very hard uh, to keep their budget request uh, at a nominal growth rate. Um, where they got the school bond, um, we're we're moving along nicely with respect to the projects in the schools. We'll be uh, doing the elevator at Hathaway. Um, we'll be doing bath finishing up bathrooms. Uh, in the elementary schools, and in the last year, we'll be doing the bathrooms yeah. in the middle we'll school. We'll have to get Dr. Kenworthy on here to talk about some of those fun things, too. Yeah. Yeah. That's always a treat. So. Well, listen, this, I mean, we need to have you on another show very soon because I've I got four or five more things I want to talk to you about. Awesome. But, but we're at the end of our show, and I so appreciate you right coming and, and talking to us. Thanks. Thanks very much. This has been Portsmouth This Week with our guest, Rich Rayner himself. We'll see you next time. Hi, this is Conley Zani from Common Fence Point. I have a great event to tell you about. Saturday, February 3rd at 2 p.m., we are having our All Abilities Zumba Showcase. By All Abilities, I mean those young adults with intellectual and developmental disabilities will be teaching the entire Zumba class. They've worked all year, every Friday, on learning how to teach their favorite songs. And so this Saturday, the third, they're gonna be putting on quite the show for their loved ones, moms, dads, friends, and family. This is a free event and it is all sponsored by the John E. Fogarty Foundation that takes care of those with intellectual and developmental disabilities. Hope to see you there. Hi, this is Conley Zani from Common Fence Point. We have a Winter Wonderland Ball coming up on February 10th at 7 p.m. It's a time to put on your gowns and your tuxes and come out. Neil and the Vipers will be playing live music. We've, we're going to have a beautiful sir, um, hors d'oeuvres and food. Please come join us. Common Fence Point. You can find tickets at commonfencepoint.org. The Newport Navy Choristers is a local choral group associated with the military that raises money for local 501c3 organizations. If you would like to join us on our journey and learn more about us or become one of our sponsors for a concert to benefit your organization, please visit us at www.newportnavychoristers.org.